Okay, so let's take a look at an example where the project has progressed. So we now can see there's a, a timeline here. The time now sort of blue dashed line represents that progress has been made. The project has elapsed. Uh, we're about 10% into this uh, hammock here for the overall project, which is effectively representing the PMO in this example. So we've completed an activity here. We're also into that hammock. Uh, we can see that physical percent completion is about 10% down here. Now, if we go back to our cost module and we take a look at this, now you'll recall that under the input fields, we can insert a field, call it something like an actual spent. Uh, and as long as this uh, type has been changed from remaining to actual, then you'll, what you'll see is it doesn't feature down here as part of the remaining cost calculation. Instead, it's just a kind of a single uh, lump sum of money. And I suppose if you really wanted to, you could have actual spend um, March, actual spend April, uh, or at financial year, or whatever you wanted to do. But for the purpose of this demonstration, let's just keep it super simple. It's just going to be a single column, and we're just going to call it actual. So actual money that we've actually spent. So that adds it in. So we've got this um, column now called actual. Now you have to think about this a little bit because what are you trying to achieve? You know, if you know that you're about 10% into the uh, the progress of the PMO, the hammock, so this item here. Now we know that it's some totals it up at 5.8 million. That's fine. Uh, but the PMO is spread across lots of different kind of cost centers uh, or cost elements, and they they collectively build up towards uh, th this overall management cost, right? So what we're looking to do is think about the progress. So we've spent, uh, we've, we're about 10% into the program. Of that 5.8 million, we can reasonably expect to have spent 580,000. Now you'll see that you can't actually add an actual spend of 580,000 into this column here uh, at the PMO sort of level. So Safran in the cost module here is actually going to force you to only enter it against the cost elements because that's the money that's being spent against the particular elements, which means you'd have to put 400,000 in here and 180,000 in here uh, respectively for these items. Uh, and then that would add up to the PMO of the 5.8 or the 580,000, 10%. So there's a little consideration there. So if you're thinking, oh, OK, so I've got to do that for all of these things, then you might actually find you want to export that to Excel and handle that because you can just do it really quickly, work out the formula once and then just drag and you drag down the formula. So it'd be much quicker for you and then just re-import. So but make sure that you have the actual column present in the, the, uh, the grouping. Sorry, with like the, the input fields first before you do the export. So it's actually there. Um, now I'll do very quickly just 400. Add an extra zero, 400,000 spent on that one. And we'll also spend 180,000. On that one. So I want you to notice what's actually changed. Is that the total column here has now added these monies on to it, whereas total remaining uh, remains as it was a moment ago because it's disregarding the actual spent. The total remaining is not the same thing as the total. Now the total is trying to effectively do as an estimate at complete, whereas total remaining is estimate to complete, just to give it the kind of the language that you probably heard from the AACE International uh, or, or someone like that. So. That means that if you spent some money in here, you're now going to have to proportionately reduce some of these figures so that the remaining uh, reduces because we've incurred some cost that we're anticipating to spend. So in this case, we're still going to need the 10 people on the senior leadership team for the duration. We're still going to need the three senior leadership members as well. Um, and their annual rate hasn't changed. So these things are still going to remain the same. So actually it's the frequency. And in this case, I was using um, just these five frequency as let's say five years to work up my 
initial kind of price forecast. So we've now gone into the project somewhat. So we would now need to reduce these figures by an amount. Um, so if it's five years, 12 months, so 10% of five, the 0.5. So we'll put in four and a half and we'll also do the same for that. So that has reduced the proportion uh, um, over here in terms of the total remaining. Um, and now when you add well, that part of the table plus the actual spent date, you can see we still got our four and 1.8 million respectively. So you're going to have to be careful because obviously I've built this particular table in this particular fashion, whereas other people will do it in a different way because simply for the reason that they will be using maybe a cost database on their project and that's going to maybe not even give you the quantities, the annual rates and so forth. So it might only just give you a single answer, like a single uh, value against each of these cost elements. Now that's going to be great because if you can do that, and then have it show what was the, the total and, and what's the, the actual spent, then you can have those two columns um, added in respectively. Um, so that's going to be useful, but you do need to consider what is that then doing over here? Because just remember that this variable and fixed proportions, which is coming up with day rates, is reflecting the, the total. So it's reflecting the entire total. So hopefully this shouldn't result in a change over here when working out the, the day rate or the burn rate, so long as the actual spend reflects the intended spend. Now, given that reality doesn't always uh, meet expectation of the forecast, then it's reasonable to assume, therefore, that these day rates might then start changing. So you might want to give that some uh, consideration and thought as well in here. So it's good to know that the features are there if you need them, uh, and they might need a little bit of thought and planning in how to use them effectively and robustly. Um, but now I suppose the main thing to do would be to run the simulation with these things all uh, in place now. So we can see that there's an activity there that's completed. So this one's not moving on the left hand side of the, the blue sort of timeline time now. Everything else is moving around. Hit complete on that simulation. Go to the distribution graph and we should now be able to show you. You know, the overall project cost of the project here uh, goes up to 114 million as a P80 of 96.8 million, P50 at 92, etc. And if you then change to show include the actual cost, we should see uh, the overall total 100% cost actually rise, uh, as well as maybe some other values. There we are. So hopefully you clocked that. It did go up by much because we've only spent about 10% uh, of the project. If I click it one more time, so you'll see it, it will reduce from 114.9 million. And we'll toggle that off to 0.3 million. So there you are. So that is how you can check to see if it's having an effect on your output, on your graph. Um, do note that it doesn't label the graph as such as showing uh, estimate to complete or estimate at complete. So that's another consideration that when you are designing your reports, just to make sure that you're showing the right graph. So the ramifications of how you interface a uh, mid project execution, uh, all the kind of data coming from different sources, the project risk register, the schedule and the, indeed the cost module all have quite big interplay uh, or ramifications on one another and you know the order of the sequence that you do that. So it's quite a meaty topic what we just discussed there. Um, now we're coming to the end of the series so that you know the next video is just to kind of wrap off um, some conclusions on where to get additional help and support so go ahead and watch that video but also linked to this is the the notion that you are progressing um, mid project and maybe the inflation rates are not behaving as you had expected maybe you are mid project and now thinking wow okay I I'm now experiencing a cost of living crisis um, and other world events that are happening at the moment. So things are costing more. Uh, so if 
you want to actually model the uncertainty that inflation or you might call it escalation in North America uh, is having on your project, then actually there's ways of doing that in the cost module um, that you can't really do with a resource loaded schedule. So in the resource loaded schedule approach that I already detailed in a different video external to this video series, uh, that actually talks about how you just have like this one single point of guessing what you think the inflation rate will be in any given period and you just kind of accumulate that on top of one another uh, as you as you like. Uh, whereas actually in, in the cost module, you can govern that by formula, by, you know, by if statements and such like. So I haven't recorded it yet. Uh, it's, it falls outside the scope of this uh, video series the 30 part series um so do watch out for that follow me on linkedin uh, follow safran of course on linkedin as well um and then uh, hopefully you'll be notified when that video gets released uh, but do watch out for that one